In another possible breakthrough in one of Australia's oldest cold cases, the 1965 Wanda Beach murders, a man allegedly confessed to his then girlfriend that he had been the one who brutally raped and murdered 15-year-old friends Christine Sharrock and Marianne Smith in the sand dunes near Cronulla Beach in Sydney. Marion Schmidt and Christine Sharrock were not only neighbours in Sydney's West Ride in 1965, they were best friends. The girls were more mature than their 15 years of age, and Marion, especially, often played the role of mum to her five brothers and younger sister. So she was a family girl, you know, she was the eldest of the girls and saw the role as assisting and nurturing the kids because it was a large family, seven. And my dad had died, you know, some 12, 18 months before. It was all the hands to the deck and she took to it very, very well. During the school holidays, it fell to Marion to help keep the kids entertained. So on January 11th, 1965, Marion and her best mate Christine set off to Wanda Beach at Cronulla with the four younger Schmidt children. Uh, it was a nice sunny warm uh, January day. Once there, uh, as the day progressed, the um, wind had really kicked in. Ultimately, we ended up huddling in a uh, sand dune just to escape uh, the winds. But the shift in the weather wasn't the only change at the beach, according to Marion's younger brother, Peter Schmidt, who was just 10 years old when his sister took him to the beach that day. <laughs> Peter recalls that after a while, something came over his sister and Christine. They began acting out of character, almost giddy with excitement. But I'll read to you what you said in your police statement which was Marion and Christine didn't sit down with us. They put all the towels that we had around us and said they would go on further. You said to Marion and Christine, where are you going? And they said, both of them, to me, we're going mad. And they didn't say anything else. And that was the last you saw of them. Yeah, yeah. Giggling. 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 <laughs> where are you going, mate? They were observed in the company of a youth about 16 years of age. They were seen to disappear with that youth into the sand dunes and were not seen after that time. <laughs> um, yeah, we waited. They waited, sadly. It seemed an eternity. Peter Schmidt is just 10 years old, the eldest of the kids at the beach. It's getting dark, and this little boy is scared and confused. Well, that's so, I think it was like five, five or six o'clock or something. Peter takes charge and decides to leave the beach with his younger sister and brothers, aged nine, eight, and five. He's hoping to find Marion and Christine at home. In my mind, they're still going to come out. But, uh, yeah, they weren't home, so I had to explain to um, the brothers um, what happened. And somebody had said, we've reported the missing to the police. The girls are officially declared missing. New South Wales police launch one of their largest ever searches. They'd never dealt with this before. Two young girls who just vanished from the sand dunes. There was a radio report that two bodies had been found, girls in a bikini. And I've gone, clearly not our two girls because they didn't have bikinis, they had one person. And then it all sort of just went bang. It's like a ton of bricks. Here at Wanda Beach today, there is practically no trace of the tragedy which has shocked all of Sydney. Behind me, a short distance down the beach, a young man and his nephews yesterday stumbled upon the bodies of the two teenage girls from Ryde buried in a shallow grave. Uh, we feel that this man is a compulsive killer uh, who must stab and uh, have sexual intercourse with his victim uh, as an overall part of the act. It was frenzied 
and it was disgraceful. I mean, appalling. I mean, nearly severed the neck. So what sort of person is that? Long-time suspect Derek Percy, who was sentenced to life in prison for the brutal 1969 murder of 12-year-old Yvonne Tui, was suspected of at least nine more murders, including Christine and Marianne at Wanda Beach. Percy died in prison in 2013, never confessing to anything despite a marathon effort by investigators at his hospital bedside to give closure to any further family members. More recently, a strong suspect was named as Christopher Wilder, a joint Australian-US citizen who lived in the same area and was a known surfer, often frequenting Cronulla and other Sydney beaches. He fit the description given by Marianne's younger brother as a young surfer-type man seen in the sand dunes that day. Wilder was questioned by police at the time and despite being earlier convicted for being part of a gang rape of a 13-year-old girl, he was released. It would be four years before a suspect was named. And here it is. In an original police running sheet that we uncovered from 1969, Christopher Bernard Wilder. A young surfy, a convicted sexual deviant, who just happened to be living in Ryde a few kilometres from Marion and Christine. He was named in 1969, a few years after the, the Wanda Beach murders, by his wife at the time. She went forward to police because of his violence and, and sexual ways with her at the time. Yeah, she realised what he was like as a person and, um, yeah, I think she was quite brave in coming forward and doing that, yes. He stands out far and above anyone else. Yeah, so that makes him a red-hot suspect in my eyes. But despite the tip-off that police had been desperate to find, they were flat-footed and take eight months to properly investigate Wilder, seen in this home movie. Had they acted straight away, they would have discovered that Wilder was on the radar, accused of rape at Manly, even interviewed by local police. But the Wanda detectives didn't pick up on that and missed their chance to interview Wilder, who, it turns out, was a dual Australian US citizen and had fled to America. The case is marked suspended. He left the country and went to America, where he went on to become one of the worst serial murderers in the US and became known as the Beauty Queen Killer. On April 13th, 1984, Wilder died from two self-inflicted gunshot wounds in a scuffle with state troopers in the great north woods of New Hampshire, a few miles from the Canadian border. Now, the Australian newspaper has revealed that a pedophile who was sentenced in 2018 for the sexual abuse of his own daughter and sister may have confessed to the Wanda Beach murders seven years after the schoolgirls were found partially buried at the beach. The man's daughter, now aged in her 40s, told police in 2016 that she had been subjected to abuse at the hands of her father from the age of four until 11. The victim's mother revealed to police that in 1972, while they were dating, her former husband claimed he was the Wanda Beach murderer. She says that while they were sitting in his car, he turned to her and out of the blue asked if she remembered the Wanda Beach murders, then said quite calmly words to the effect, I did that. The woman told police she felt startled but thought he was making a joke. She responded with something like, don't be silly, you did not. He did not respond straight away, but after seeing her startled expression, 
said something similar to, no, I didn't, I'm only kidding. The woman also advised officers she believed that her former husband is capable of anything. The man's younger sister was one of two other women who also told police they were sexually abused by him as a child. Police had reportedly been advised the convicted sex abuser went to the same school as Marion Schmidt, Marsden High School, and lived locally. It's also understood that he enjoyed surfing as a teenager and frequently visited Sydney beaches, including Cronulla. The man cannot be named at this time to protect the identity of his daughter. Marion's brother, Hans, said the revelation should lead to further investigation, adding that anything that would bring closure to the case would obviously be of great interest to the family. New South Wales Police declined to comment on the confession allegations when contacted by the Australian newspaper, adding that Homicide Squad detectives continue to appeal for public information.